Hey everyone, it's the Four Gun Guy. You know, when I receive a product and it's just way above my expectations, <clears throat> I just want to give it a shout out. And that's what happened today. Now, if you have been looking at my other videos, you know that I'm, I'm really trying to standardize both my uh, 6.5 Creedmoor and my new Voodoo 22 long rifle uh, on a common platform. So I'm really trying to, to make everything about these rifles exactly the same uh, down to the trigger pull. And uh, I have the Voodoo. It's in an, an MDT ACC uh, chassis. And I just ordered another one so I could standardize the chassis. Well, I received this thing today and I was so surprised at just the quality of everything from these people that I thought I'd just give them a shout out. Now, I don't get anything for this. MDT doesn't even know who I am. I'm just another guy who bought some stuff from them. But like I said, when I see stuff like this, I really think uh, it's important to, to give credit where credit is due. Now, so what I wanted to do today is kind of go over, you know, why I, I went with the MDT ACC chassis. Uh, I'm going to talk about some other options out there. So there's a lot of great chassis and stock manufacturers out there. I'll put some of those up on the screen. We'll talk about them. And then I also want to talk about my, uh, you know, why I'm sticking with a chassis. Now, the video on the standardization between these two rifles is coming up. Uh, I just needed to get this first, get it mounted. I have two matches this weekend, so I'm kind of busy with that. But uh, that video is going to come out, and I'm really excited about that. So if you're ready to go, let's get to it. Look, you know, I, I had this on my, on this rifle actually originally. So when I ordered my original rifle, which the only thing now that's original about this thing is the impact precision action. <laughs> That's it, everything else is different. But when I ordered this, a gentleman uh, did a really good job of building it for me, because I had never gotten into this. I built uh, ARs and stuff like that for three gun shotguns, but I was like, I want someone to, to do the first one for me. So he built it, uh, he said, trust me, this is what you'll like, and I did. So it was this, this action with a, uh, uh, Bartline barrel in an MDT ACC chassis. Uh, it was the different color and now that chassis is on my Voodoo uh, 22 long rifle. So I knew these chassis. Uh, now if you saw my other video on the Manners TCS, I actually tried that stock and my initial impressions were very good. I, I did like it. Uh, there were a few shortcomings though that I realized with that stock or to me with a stock. We'll talk about those in a second. Let's get back to the MDC, uh, MDT ACC. I'm going to start at the back here. This uh, buttstock here is just excellent. It's got great adjustment to it. It has, the thing I like about this is it has two adjustment knobs for both the cheek rest uh, and the length of pull. Other chassis and stocks only have or might have just one adjustment screw or knob and I like two. These wheels, adjustment wheels, are very easy to use up and down, very smooth. Um, I will tell you that one big thing that was a challenge with that MD or with the uh, Manners TCS was number one, for $1,800, they didn't give you a little adjustment knob. They just gave you a hex uh, screw. And that didn't really hold it that good. Then I had to spend another $20 for a knob, a tactile knob like this has, uh, for that. Then I had to email them back and ask for five additional washers so the knob could actually hold the cheek riser firmly in position because it kept just going down because there wasn't enough torque on that thing. So I'm going to talk to the quality right now. The quality between this and that to me was big. Um, 
the, the build quality of that Manners TCS was nice. The, the way they, they built it was nice. But little things like that uh, just irked me. And so that's another reason why I went back to the ACC. But, so this is great. I did get the bag rider, very easy to install. We're gonna talk about that in a minute. Uh, I got the vertical grip with it. This thing is excellent. And I love the way they've got the thumb rest built into this thing. Now I'm right-handed, but if I was left-handed, your thumb rests right here. It's very, very nice. Uh, it, it's just a good position for your hand and everything to be in. Uh, and then the grip is fantastic. They've got the uh, barricade stop here. I'll be honest with you, on every chassis I've seen, the barricade stop is too short. That's just for me. Because by the time you put a bag up on that uh, uh, position and you load into it, you're loading your magazine into it as well. And trust me, I've had jams because of that. And I don't care what chassis or stock you're dealing with. I've seen it with a lot of other guys on a lot of different chassis and stocks. So I actually use that uh, Gray Ops plate and I made my own 90 degree barricade stop for that that comes way down beyond the magazine. So the magazine is never impacted. But look, this is a great feature. Uh, they've put it on here, that's great. It's a, it's a barricade stop. It can work in some instances. I love, love, love this end here. <laughs> it's super long. And because it's super long, it's got a long arc rail that goes the entire length of it. That's another thing you want to consider, right? Some of these stocks and other chassis have shorter uh, four ends here. And because of that, if you want to extend out, you're going to have to buy an accessory. You're going to have to buy an addition to that four end. You see a lot of that out there when you look at these guys running these stocks. So I just love that about this. The weight system, fantastic. Uh, easy to install. It's not cheap. If I, could, if I can do one negative mark about the MDT products is their weight systems are just way overpriced in my opinion. But once you get them, once you install them, you're never gonna take them off and they're very, uh, they're very easy to maneuver up and down this rail, which is another thing I like on some of these other chassis and stocks. You're gonna look down inside here and you're gonna see, you're gonna see like uh, uh, pouches or inserts that you have to put the weights there. This isn't the case on this. I can move these weights up and down the rail and as long as they align with the many, many holes that are on the underside of this thing, I'm good to go. So I can really distribute the weight on this rail uh, on this forend really, really well. So, uh, the build quality and everything, I'm, um, I've been running a video of, of close-ups of all this. I just have to tell you that the quality of this is fantastic. But let's talk about another thing that I really liked when I unboxed this today. So I get this thing, uh, UPS, they shipped it to me. It was packaged just, just fantastically. Now, I actually had the Oryx chassis for my original Tika T1X. I, I took the, uh, the original stock off of that and put the Oryx chassis in there. So I was familiar with the quality from MDT, but this just blew me away. Everything was packaged perfectly. Uh, this thing came in this box that was just foamed up to the gills. Everything was perfect. The instructions are so clear and simple. And again, look guys, I know this is not rocket science installing this stuff, right? It's not, uh, it's not complicated. But I gotta point out one thing, this, this is so stupid, but it's so funny. For the, uh, for the grip, right? I open up the grip box to the grip and I see this thing. I thought this was a bag of grease. It's not, it's a mint. And inside the box to this, this is what it says. The only thing that should suck is this mint. It says, this MDD product may not be the easiest installation you've ever done. So take your time, go easy, and relax with this soothing mint. So apparently they got some feedback about how, <laughs> how difficult it can be to put this, uh, this vertical grip on. I don't think it's that hard, but maybe they got some feedback. 
I just thought it was so cool that they did this. And I'll tell you what I did. Guess what I did? I opened the package up. I put the mint in my mouth and I said, you know what? They told me to take my time. I took a breath and I took my time and installed this thing. It took four minutes to install that. But there are, you, you can get some things backwards on here. Maybe you're not understanding what screw goes where, but I just think stuff like that is there's a company out there that thinks about their product. And at some point they say, hey, this might be a little intimidating or a little hard for some people to do. Let, let's make it easy on them. Let's give them a little humor and walk them through it. So anyway, uh, that, that's just another reason why I love this product. Well, let's look at some of the other options now that are out there that you might want to consider. And again, I'm just going to do an overview of them. We're not going to go into great detail about any of them. I didn't do a product matrix like I'll do with my uh, guns or anything or scopes. Uh, but I just wanted to, to uh, talk to you about some other options out there as well. All right, well, I, I like to use the Precision Rifle blog as kind of a reference for things. Now, um, you know, I wish they went on to 2020 and maybe 2021. This kind of ends at 2019, but if you go onto their site and look at the most popular chassis slash stocks, you'll, you'll see the list of them here. And I'll, I'll put that up here as well. You've got Masterpiece Arms, Manners, Foundation, XLR, J. Allen, Accuracy, International, KRG, McMillan, and MDT, and then some others below that. So as you can see, in 2019, MDT was pretty far down that list. I know they've gotten more popular over the last two years uh, in the sport, um, so I, I don't know where they would fall today. I'm going to say probably somewhere just below XLR. That's just my thinking, or maybe below Accuracy, International. But uh, if you look at some of these uh, other stocks and chassis, like Masterpiece Arms, right? They've got their uh, competition chassis, and I think they just, I think I'll put it up here. They just came out with a new type of chassis. They are beautiful chassis. So I've, I've seen them up close. I think their workmanship is as good as this. It looks like it to me. It looks like they have the same kind of setup. Uh, so that might be an option for you. Uh, when you look at the, of course, foundation is, you know, foundation is, is really big. Uh, they are primarily stocks and a lot of guys are going to the stock. We're going to get to that in a minute. Uh, foundation, you've got XLR. XLR, again, 12% of these shooters choosing to run one of the XLR chassis. J. Allen, I don't know that I put that uh, in here or not. Accuracy International, got those. Uh, KRG, that Whiskey 3 chassis is, re is a really good looking chassis and I think they might have another one there. Um, and then they talk about stocks versus chassis. Now back in 2019, I'll put this graphic up there as well, there were more shooters using chassis than stocks. I can tell you just by being on the line at these matches today, Stocks are, in my opinion, I think, are overtaking the chassis now. Everybody's going to the stock. Uh, I like the chassis, as I said before, simply because this one is narrower for my smaller hands. Um, and I don't know, I just like the modularity of this thing. I like the ease of adding weight. I like the ease of the Arca rail. I don't have to extend it. I don't... I just really like the way this is set up. So that's that. Even though stocks are coming into, uh, coming into favor now. And I think, I, I think some of that is because of the aesthetics of the stocks. Everyone wants that cool, cool look, right? It's the new thing. Um, but I'm, I'm just coming back to, uh, to the old way, I guess. So with all that said, uh, let's talk about final thoughts. Well, look, final thoughts, pretty short and sweet. Love this. This is the MDT ACC chassis. I love the quality, uh, the build of it. I love the adjustability of the buttstock. I love the weight system, how easy it is to install and manage the weights. The full length arc rail on that fore end, absolutely love it. 
uh, the everything down to uh, the vertical grip and the, the way that I can rest my thumb, uh, that they've built that into it. You know, just everything about this is uh, I really, really like. It's really going to be, though, up to you, right? What are you going to use this thing for? Are you going to use it for hunting? Are you going to use it for competition? If you're going to use it for hunting, you may not want this open kind of chassis style that's going to get uh, hung up on tree branches and bushes and stuff like that uh, out during the hunt. Uh, you may want to look more at a stock. Uh, if you are going to look at either a stock or a chassis, you know, go to a match. See who's out there. See who has what. Ask them if you can pick it up. If you can even put it on a prop. If I'm out there and you see me and you say, hey, can I kind of put this on this prop with a bag and see how I like it? You bet you can. It, it's, I'll let you do it. Anyone will. So that's where you'll get a little more uh, idea of what might work for you and what you might be comfortable with. Make sure you understand also when you're pricing these things, all of these things are going to be honestly in the $1,400 to $1,800 range. They just are. By the time you run all these accessories up on these things, you're going to be up in that range. So be, be aware of that. Be aware of which rail type you want, right? Do you want the Arca rail? Do you want to go with something else? Uh, do you have all these accessories that are that type of rail? Picatinny or Arca? Maybe that's going to help you make your decision there. Make sure you don't get something that's, that's too proprietary. I had that Bergara, and I remember the, the forend of that thing, if I wanted to put a Picatinny rail on that, I had to buy their Picatinny rail because uh, a regular mounting system for that wouldn't work. So just be careful of all of that and see if there are, maybe there's some aftermarket parts for, the, for what you're looking for uh, that might be cheaper. So anyway, hey guys, I hope you really like this one. Again, I just wanted to, like I told you, I got this in today. This was not on my list of videos to do, but I, the more I kept messing with this thing, I was like, man, this is just pure quality. And then you get down to the instructions and little stupid things like a mint. I mean, I think someone put some thought into all this. So thanks again for watching. I really appreciate the subscriptions, the great comments, all the likes. And I've got some other things coming up. So I've got the two rifles where I'm standardizing across platforms. I do have the zero compromise review. I promise you that. I'm just looking for a really good camera mount system that I can really shoot some stuff through this thing, show you the reticle and the clarity. And then I've got some other video ideas that I'm going to come out with. So thanks again for watching everyone. And until next time, shoot straight.